I talk loud. It's okay. Adjust it, adjust it. Welcome back to another episode of Dirt Surfers, where we go down philosophical tangents at your expense. Today we have an amazing guest, long overdue, Mark Matthew Martinez, filmmaker, creator, skater, family man. Welcome to the show, Mark. Thanks. Thanks for having me. At at the studio. Yes. We are here. Right here. So we, we started doing, how long ago was it, dude, like that we did? It's been two years since we did the the first version or the first season of, of Dirt Surfers. Yeah, I think it's been about two years. It's been two years, right? Yeah. yeah. And actually, I want to talk to you about that because... So the idea came from a t-shirt for the podcast, but how did, how did dirt surfers come to be? Cause I don't think we ever talked about how, cause I mean, I've Googled it and shit and it's like a band. There's a band out there, mm-hmm. but with a Z yeah, dirt surfers. Yeah. yeah. But that's it. Do you, where did, de donde nació? Well, as far as my interpretation of dirt surfers was, um, so I had a, I have a cousin that grew up in California. Okay. And so talking about Noah. Yeah, my cousin Noah. And we shout started, out to Noah. Yeah, we, we kind of started skateboarding together. Okay. At the same time, and he moved. He's from El Paso, and he moved to Southern California, like by San Diego. And um, uh, I stayed with him one summer, and um, he lived like right near the beach, and so he would surf all the time. I think what he told me, and then. I kind of always wanted to surf, you know, grow up in that lifestyle. Yeah, because when you, when you go to California and then you're from the desert, dude, mm-hmm. it's like, not that you get jealous of it, but you're like, damn, this is, this is where I belong. Yeah, so I always had like a, like this, um, I always wanted to surf when I was younger. And then, so I think like, you know, and skateboarding, eventually that kind of like, I took that as like we were dirt surfing, you know what I mean? Like skateboarding in, a, tight, in the dude. desert. And that was like my interpretation, you know, cause even though like we didn't grow up and get to actually surf in the water and stuff, like we were surfing in the, yeah, that makes sense. The desert. So that was just like my interpretation of it. And that OG design that we did for neon desert, that was, that was hand drawn. No, you did that. You just sketched it out real quick. Yeah. I was trying to do it like, uh, yeah, I just drew it real quick. I wanted it to look like one of those old, like surf club, Shirts, you know, they, I, I don't know them. what that is. They, there used to be like these, but like the guy all, yeah, like that, you know, like not just surf clubs, but like, like Gecko Hawaii. Oh, dude, Gecko Hawaii. I forgot about that shit. Like body glove or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> dude, with that hand, yeah, the yeah. logo, dude, that, I forgot about those shirts, dude. Yeah, I, I wanted to do something like that. Damn, so would you say that a lot of the skate companies were just riffing off of like surf companies? I, or I, like back and forth because a skater uh, or like a surfer is obviously skating also mm-hmm. right like that was very much like a way of transportation just to the beach and stuff i would say yeah like the early parts of skateboarding like the 80s i guess like tony alba and all them i think that was yeah they all surfed also late 70s whenever they started i do think that the surfing and skateboarding thing were like intertwined in southern california yeah so I definitely think like the brands, especially like brands like Vans and stuff like that, like yeah. van, like surfing was kind of like part of it in the beginning. Yeah, I mean, it was like the the foundation of it for sure. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're gassy. Mm. Yeah. Mechiladas. <laughs> Damn, well, I mean, I jumped into that just because I wanted to know a little bit more of the, or, the origin. Mm-hmm. But um, so let's go into who you are. So you were obviously born here locally. Yes. Born and raised in El Paso, Texas. Yep. Um, when did you start skateboarding? What was wh- what was the age where you first was that that trip that San Diego trip that you're talking about? No, well, I would say that my first like introduction to skateboarding yeah. was in fourth grade. Whoa, and, dude! Yeah, I don't so think I was, I've heard this. Yeah, I was like eight, eight or nine, I think, and I met a <coughs> an old friend of mine, Chris Shahan. Ooh, to the Shayan yeah. Meister. Yeah, we had fourth grade Miss Tremaine together. And Damn, uh, you remember it like that? Yeah, because like, um, so like my cousin Noah, like he was like my best friend at the time, I think. Yeah. So then when I got to fourth, same grade? Yeah, we're the same age. 
Okay. So um, what happened was like I kind of got into like uh, like cholo culture, I guess, for a little bit. What do you mean? Touch like, on this. Okay, so like, what does cholo culture mean? Like, you had those freaking the brushes in your pocket that you'd slide yeah, in, and you're like, like, you know, and tres, like flores. tres flores. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, I would go down to. Well, actually, it was my older brother, Chris. Yeah, he, he was kind of getting into it. I mean, we didn't see it like as like a like a gang or something like that. It was just kind of like it was a an style. aesthetic, it was dude. Like, yeah, it was like a style and like low riders and that type of thing. Yeah, that's badass. Yeah, like low rider magazine and all that. It happened a lot in El Paso. But, yeah, it does. It does. But um. So when I got the haircut where like you shave all on the sides and you leave the the top long and you just slick back with the flores. <laughs> you should bring that shit black. Black. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I, black. Yeah. Come on, guys. So I had the haircut like that, and in fourth grade, um, I, I was trying to make friends, and I damn fourth grade you had this haircut. Yeah, I, my dad. He, he was pretty cool about letting us experiment. Experiment like that. with your styles. You know, I don't think he saw anything. They, he thought it was harmless, I guess. Yeah, but he knew, obviously, like, they were regulating it. Obviously, It wasn't like... Yeah, like, my mom, they were pretty cool about it, except, like... What about Chris, though? Your brother, was he also into the cholo culture? I mean, that's why I, I got into it mainly because of him. Okay, you know? all right. So he would wear, like, we would go down to El Loco Gomez, Gomez and, like... What is that? It's a store downtown, and... uh I know La Negrita. La Negrita. Okay. They would sell like Ben Davis and like uh, Damn. those like, I forgot, that, like Dickies and stuff like that. They would sell down there. But so my then mom, you, you, sorry to interrupt, but like, so from a very early age, you were already like kind of like cultivating your style. I guess. I didn't realize I was doing that, but I think so. I, I don't yeah. Know. Cause nowadays like Gen Z, like they really, they're meticulous about that. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like these shoes, Yeah. you know, all this, but you were just like, this is cool. I just want to try it out. Yeah, I, I definitely, like, it never came out the way that they looked, you know, but, like, it ended up looking different for me because, like, my hair was a little curly, so, like, yeah. the guys I would see had kind of straighter hair, yeah. so it would just be slick back, you know what I mean? Yeah. The shades on the side of mine, because my hair is curly, it would kind of fall to the side. Okay. So, well, like, and, and my parents, like, they were cool with it, but my mom wouldn't let me buy the Cortez, the Nike Cortez. That oh, was she the, had rules. That was like the limit. That's like what, yeah. She wouldn't buy those. Yeah, nah. those were like cholo shoes. Yeah, I couldn't she was get like, the, that's too far. What's the Adidas? The I was gonna say clamshell. The shell toe. Shell toe. Yeah. Clamshell. Yeah. Yeah, dude, those were like, no, nah, you can't buy those. So, um, sorry, I'm like long winded answer, but anyway. Oh man, I like it. I like it. This is what we need, man. So I had my hair like that, and I was just. On the playground by myself. I don't even know what the question was. Let's just keep going. How I got into skating. Yeah, that's right. So, so you were uh, a cholo skater, dude. I wasn't even skating back then. Oh, okay. So I just I was I think I was wearing like huge white pants and like <laughs> like a black and white flannel, and then I had my hair shaved inside. <laughs> where, where do you find white? Well, they would take us down there to a local Gomez and mm. a local and a, a negrita, and they would sell it. You know, yeah. but I was too small, so my my clothes are baggy, baggy, that's tight. So, anyways, I was dressed like that, like into fourth grade, like the few first few weeks, and I didn't really, I wasn't making friends, <laughs> you know, because Noah was in like a different class than me. Okay. And so Chris Shahan and this guy Sebastian Del Corral came up to me, and, and uh, Chris was like, "Hey, why do you why do you cut your hair like that?" Chris asked you this. Yeah, and I was like, uh, "And you didn't know him yet." You I didn't, don't know. He was in my class. Just approached you. He's like, "Man, what's me. this steez going on here?" You he just asked me, and I was like, "Oh, like." I like it. And then <laughs> he was like, cool. Uh, do you want to come to my house later? What? Just like that? Yeah. And I was like, okay, He's like, I sure. like this guy. <laughs> I guess. He's like, yeah, this is a good answer. So then, um, yeah. So then after that, like, I think, I don't know if it was the same day or a few days afterwards, he took me to his house um, and his older brother, Brandon, skated. So when I first went over there, like, there was a bunch of skaters at his house. And oh, they, had, they had in the cul-de-sac. And so they had, like, this little tykes oh, bench in the front. And it was like... Best. The Poe brothers and people yeah. like that. They were all skating. They, they, they were from, I think I said New Brandon. This guy, Farshad. I forgot his name, but a couple of like the older really? skaters. That we knew. Yeah, they were all there. This is where it started. This is the stomping grounds of the old gen. Yes, yeah, so I think they were like in middle school and I was, you know, like young. Both Poe brothers? I don't, I think I remember seeing. It was just mad, I mean, they, no? were, they were all well, together back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they I'm, both skated. Yeah, they both skated. And then um, they were there and then uh, they were watching an escape video. At, and and Shahan and Chris's room. Do you remember what video it was? I think it was Shorty's Hardware Tour. That's what they Ooh. told me. Yeah. So I, I had no idea what they were watching, but that was my introduction to skating. Yeah. So I didn't really skate at all. 
for like another yeah but now you're hanging out with skaters that yeah, are so actually Chris, like yeah so chris was like a good friend and like i'd hang out with them all the time yeah. but um because of that i just didn't think i was ever good enough to skate you know like i just thought it was way cooler than that, than me and so like i just was too coming scared. from the freaking cholo <laughs> catering his outfits from local gomez like that <laughs> that's probably why shayhan approached you bro like he probably, and especially if he was already watching shorties and stuff, because mm-hmm. that, that wasn't at that time. That's the old school team, right? Like, that's like, that was like, it was a mid Baptista. It was a little bit before that. Damn. So it was, yeah, it was like, because they had a, dude, their whole group was crazy. Even Chad Muska was already, I don't know if that's the old, is is that? Or maybe, it might have been fifth grade. I can't, well, it, 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 it was been, around that. Okay. It might have been 20 shot sequence, this other video they're watching. I might be blending the two together. Okay. But it's another. Like mid ninety skate video, so there was a bunch. But they were out. all wearing because I remember watching uh, Hot Chocolate too. Not Hot Chocolate too. What's the Las Aventuras de oh, the chocolate video? The chocolate. Yeah, video. You remember how they all yeah, dressed? That like time, that yeah. was kind of just like, very hardcore Cholo vibes. Yeah, it was like mouse. Like yeah, with era. the tiny wheels. Yes. Yeah, so baggy pants. I mean, baggy pants with the Jinko and all that stuff were big back then. So like Jinkos, dude. I, I kind of leaned real hard into like yeah. that that big baggy pants thing. But um, anyways, being at Chris's house. Yeah. I saw skating and I was around it for like a good two years after that. And then it wasn't, you know, like, like I said, I was, I tried other things. Like I tried BMXing and what happened with the BMX? I wasn't good. And I, I broke my teeth doing it after <laughs> I got my first like Schwinn bike. What teeth did you break? My two front ones right here. Are those real? Yeah, they're real. But like, I just like they're half, half of them are, are like, uh, oh, dude. The, I would have never like feelings. Known. Okay. 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 So you busted your face and you're like, all right, I'm not going to do BMX. Uh, yeah, no. So, um, do you remember what grade. kind of bike you had? A Schwinn super stock. Ooh, do I remember the diamond backs? There was a bunch. There was like the yeah. diamond backs, the Royce unions, mm-hmm. Schwinn, the, mongoose. It was mongoose. Yeah. Damn. The gyro. You could do the, yeah, whole. the gyro. You could spin. It's now, now that I think about it, bro, that's way harder than skating. It was. I mean, I think because like you're picking up all that weight, you yeah, know what I, I mean? Like, I so what'd you, how'd you bust your face? So I had just learned how to bunny hop, Damn, bunny hopping, yeah. dude. And so I was just doing like, I could barely get off the floor, but, um, I, I had two friends, this guy, hops. this guy, Scott McClure. And I like how you remember I mean, all their last names. No, Scott Bartels and Ryan McClure. Yeah. They were, they were, they were really good at okay. BMX. And so they would do like the dirt ramps and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's different though. And so they were good and, and they could do it on the street too. And they, oh, could, they were both. Yeah. They could both do so we had that culture already popping off here? Yeah, there was like BMXers. Okay. But like, I it's terrible. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I tried to get into it. Like, I, I remember the bike I did have to hang out with them in the beginning was like, <laughs> it was like one of those bikes, I don't know if you remember, that looked like a dirt bike. It had like fake plastic yeah, on it. Yeah, dude, it was all like, yeah. uh, it had, yeah, no, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, it, it looked like it was a, like a real dirt bike. Like a real dirt but bike, was, but you're all pedaling and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, well, they even had Harleys. Yeah. They had Harleys that looked like, well, there was bikes that looked like Harleys. Well, what I did, it was, I, Dude, I, took, you just, I, I took all ugh, the plastic off. Rat, that, rat so raven? That's so raven moment, <laughs> dude. Like, damn, dude, I forgot about it. Did you have pegs? Well, so. <laughs> what? So what happened was I, I took, um, so I got, uh, so a couple things. <laughs> I took the plastic off my Okay, so you modded bike your bike to make it look like a real BMX bike. Okay. But I tried to take off it had like these metal things on the side that was attached to the plastic. I know exactly what you're talking to make it look like the shocks. <laughs> Wait, <what>? <laughs> <laughs> it had like this like metal, on the front? Like, like we're on the side of the tires, the wheels on the what, front. It had like dude? this metal thing that would had fake shocks on it. <laughs> and so I took all the plastic off, but then I was trying to take the the <laughs> the metal off right yeah, yeah. and i couldn't and i just bent it up <laughs> and so like ryan and scott called me like come on bro let's go over like let's go we're gonna go to this ditch and then i showed and this up this is before like, skating it was before skating so anyways i i uh i had the my that metal piece all oh. bent, up, <laughs> bent up like that dude it was so embarrassing anyways. yeah because it's funny how the little things like you you hyper concentrate on those mm-hmm. things you're hyper focused on the little thing like you know they're clowning you in their head but obviously yeah. these guys are cool yeah they were just like what the hell's wrong with your bike <laughs> you know <laughs> oh just like oh nothing man i just tried to take this thing off <laughs> you're okay. explaining it to them so anyways oh that's for good. christmas i really wanted to get a real bmx bike yeah and asked my dad and he did layaway at right on sports 
for like half for like half a year taking us back dude <laughs> ride on sports yeah. dude so we did like layaway for half a year and, and what'd you get that was the schwinn the schwinn super stock it was silver with like like these like blue chrome Ooh, the chrome i remember yeah, the chrome the blue chrome yeah it was so nice but then i was writing it and then pegs uh, no pegs okay so they they got me pegs from somebody. I was asked. I asked Ryan and Scott. I'm like, hey, can you guys get me? Pegs? I remember that was a big thing, man. Yeah, because I think they had them at the store, but they were like expensive, and so they were like, yeah, hey, we can get you some, bro. How and funny! They got me some, but um, <laughs> I didn't know you're supposed to put them on both sides, so I put them just in the back because I thought like my friends could ride on the back. With yeah, me. that's what I thought. Well, yeah, that was like the thing. Oh, doing. like because to thought, grind and to stuff. Grind. I didn't know. Was yeah, like, anyways, yeah. in my I had a ditch by my house, in my old house. That like it had like a lip you can grind like I thought you can grind on, so what I did is I hauled ass down the ditch and I leaned into the lip, but it only caught the back, <laughs> and it just fucking spun me around, dude. And I ate shit so bad in the ditch because like <laughs> the front pegs to grind, you know what I mean? <laughs> just like the motion was to the, grind. Yeah, I leaned, but on you it. only had one peg. I leaned on it. In so- all reality, you were just like. It's like a five zero. You were trying <laughs> yeah, to do a five zero. I was trying to do a five zero, but like I wasn't leaning up or nothing. Yeah, so yeah. I just, so you just smashed I just, it. <laughs> it just spun me like in a circle, and it just threw me into the ditch super hard. Oh man. Anyways, a couple months later, you know that fall, and I tried. I was learning how to bunny hop, and then we were in front of uh, Ryan's house, and yeah, they had like set up a little like trash can thing you can bunny hop over, and they were Damn. doing it just fine, easy. And then I went just hauled ass. I hit the the, the little. <laughs> The driving, the parking. I mean, yeah, like wait, the driveway. The driveway. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you guys were already doing and shit it was like, like that. a little bump. It's always been a the thing. driveway. So I Skaters hit the right. bump and I made it over, but I landed on my front tire and I just hit my face on the floor and I broke my teeth. This was in front of people. <laughs> yeah, there was like I washing his car like in the <laughs> other house and he came up. He's like, "Hey, man, like, are you all right? Damn, you really f- smashed your face." And, and he's like, "Oh, dude, your teeth." I was like, huh? What? Were you tripping? Yeah. And then my, my friend Ryan came up to me. He's like, dude, your teeth are gone. <laughs> I was like, oh. And then, oh my God, we went to the house. I called my parents. And well, how'd they react to this? Well, they were upset. I mean, they're just worried if I was okay. But Damn, I, I passed dude. out. I passed out because I kept looking in the mirror. And then, like, you were tripping. Ryan had older bro- has an older brother named Michael. And he was like, actually, I think Michael was super stoned or something. I didn't know that at the time. But he's like, dude, they can never fix your teeth. <laughs> And I was like, oh, are you serious? And then it just like <laughs> freaked me out. And then I just passed out. And oh, I woke up eventually. Oh, my God, but, dude. Damn, but, um, you knocked out mm-hmm. after. Yeah, so then long story after that, I didn't touch my BMX bike <laughs> after that. My dad kept asking me, like, why don't you ride your bike? And I was like, I don't know. You know? Yeah. Because <laughs> I. <laughs> yeah. So then um, anyways, uh, my cousin Noah. I was still friends with Chris at the time, but he was like still skating all the time. But so those guys were already heavy into it. Yeah, they're heavy into it. And so then like um, my cousin Noah, like he was moving to California and then he was like, hey, I'm going to get in this. I think one time we were at my grandparents' house and then my cousin Noah was like, I think he had been going back and forth to San Diego with his dad. Yeah. He just moved there. And so we were at my grandparents' house and he's like, hey man, like everyone's skateboarding. Like I think we should get skateboards. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Mm. So then I, I told my dad the seed was planted. Yeah. So then like, I, I think my dad, I think Noah had a skateboard already. So my dad took me to skate city and that's where I tell you that story where like he showed up and then he was going to buy me a skateboard, but they were like, uh, it's like $120. Or oh, dude said he was like, Oh, like, <laughs> I can't buy you this right now. Like maybe for your birthday or something. So they bought me a deck and a skate video, which was a birdhouse. Uh, that was your bear. first board. A Steve Barra birdhouse. No deck. trucks, no wheels, no, trucks, no nothing. No wheels. It was gripped. And then So you just like carpet skating? What the hell were you doing with that? Yeah, thing? so then and then he bought me misled youth. Because Damn. I mean that's a good that package right there alone, man. Like watching that and then with a carpet skateboard, like Yeah. So I just so I I put misled youth on, I had never seen it. Man, misled I, youth. I only bought it because the guy recommended it to me that was working there, this guy, Tony Peterson. You remember the guy? Or Scott Peterson. I think it's Tony. I can't remember. It's one of the Peterson brothers. It's because I, I eventually met them after that. Okay, like, okay, like, yeah. Because I mean, we'll go. We'll f- we'll get. I think we should just focus on skating, man. Because okay. like straight up, man. Like your your origin story all the way to even now, man, is just the skate history is insane, dude. So it's cool to get you know deep into the nitty gritty. Okay, you know. So and then we can always touch on all the other stuff, you know. Yeah, but. 
I think that, I mean, look, we're already 20 minutes in. Yeah. And we haven't even scratched the surface. <laughs> yeah. Just busted teeth, misled youth, birdhouse. It was a what, Barra? It was a Steve, uh, Birdhouse Steve Barra. Steve Barra was on Birdhouse? Yeah. It was, like, was this like when Reynolds was around with Birdhouse? Yeah, back then it was like Bucky Lassick. Uh, oh, like Jer- all the cartoony decks. Yeah, Jeremy Klein, Heath Kerchart. Damn, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, it was like when the end came out. So that's, okay, so I would say the year I started skating actually was 98. Like 97, 98. 98. So that, that year. But, um, I, cause, so I knew about skating, like, and you know, like back then they'd be like, you need to get this video. So, so was, you were already getting kind of coached by your friends on like what was like in and what was out. Yeah. So like Shahan and then I had this other friend, Alex that skated and he would tell me like, you should get this and you should get that. And so I went to try and get miss, uh, fulfill the dream, the shorties video. Cause everyone talked about it and then they didn't, they were always sold out. This is before guilty. Yeah. This is I don't like, think I've watched fulfill the dream. No, no. Nah, it's dude. like one of the best. Is it really? Ever. Yeah. But, um, so then they didn't have it at Skate City. So like I, uh, Peter, uh, Tony Peterson recommended, he's like, no, nah, bro, like you need to get. How the hell would you, how, how were you getting skate videos? I remember Suncoast had skate videos, but if you, I mean, you had to get that stuff at a skate shop, at a skate shop. So I bought Misled Youth there and then that was like pretty much the whole, oh no, no, CCS. Ooh. Oh yeah. CCS had a whole video page. Yeah. So I think I had Misled Youth forever and then. I think I would just go like for my birthday or something. I would get like Try a, a four on one or something. Yeah, I think I, no. I think I got jump off a building, a toy machine video. It's like my second video. Oh man, those videos are insane. So yeah, that was kind of like when I started skating. So you're already getting thrown into like because Shayhan has already probably been skating for like probably a couple of years or something. Yeah, now. he was like he was really good. Um, so do you think you got a lot of your influence and style and and like? Well, it started curating your, your whole, like, skate vibe from Shahan. I think he definitely did help me a lot because, like, when I met him, he was definitely, like, really into things. Yeah. So, like, I remember, like, in fifth grade, like, he would, like, always tell me he was into different things. So, he was like, I'm a deadhead now. And deadhead? Like, I'm a deadhead. What is oh, that Oh, like, mean? the Grateful like, Dead? You know, it's the Grateful Dead. And we're, like, in fifth grade. Did he have like, a hatchback Honda? Um, yeah, he did. Well, n- not a hatchback, but he had like, like a, a little, like little Honda. Like, yeah, dude, yeah, he did. I used so I never knew that he was always at Marwood, huh? He would go to Marwood every now and then. I, yeah. I do remember that. But yeah, I definitely did get a lot of, I was heavily influenced by him because, mm. you know, like he was, he was like into things, into music and yeah. And then like at home, like my parents didn't really, I mean, my dad listened to music all the time, but there was never like. Like, you should listen to this and that whole thing. Yeah, they're not putting you on. You're kind of just, like, listening to what they're doing. Also, like, I think when you're at that age, when you're, like, get entering middle school, like, you start developing yourself. And, yeah, you know, I think, like, you're not going to listen to your parents. Yeah, and so Chris true. was definitely, like, really confident in the things he liked. Your brother? Uh, Sh- Shahan. Oh, Shahan. Shahan. Yeah, Shahan. Shahan. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. And then, yeah. So then, like, my brother Chris, he influenced me just with, like. Yeah, because you told me this guy was tagging, like. My, bro- my brother? Yeah, your brother, Chris. Yeah. So Cause you, you have a, you, what was your, cause you guys had like, uh, like our names. Yeah. I guess you could call it like a handle. Well, what was your, okay, what would you tag when you, when you, when you first started tagging and then we'll, we'll get off the topic, but I just, oh, I remember you told me that you had like, oh, it was so dumb. It was telly telly. Yeah. Telly. How did, would you spell that? T E L L Y. No, nah, how did that? Well, how did the only reason why they, and this is terrible. And as I got older, I realized this is a terrible comparison. <laughs> But it was because um, they watched the movie Kids. Okay. And the the main character, well, not the well, one of the main characters' mm. name is Telly, and he's this tall, skinny dude. So you were like, I, I'm that guy. No, they told me that. They're like, oh, bro, you're like told Telly. You. Everyone called me Telly, <laughs> like because of that movie. Not everyone, but like that yeah, my yeah, little friend group. group. Yeah, the like, group. It looks like you. Because I was. So gonna, I'm just gonna tag Telly. So I was like, okay, I'm Telly. Do you remember what Chris tagged your brother? Oh, Chris. No, he would tag like. His little gang names or whatever, like. What do you mean? I don't really know how far it went because he was like he didn't talk to me about it that yeah, much. But yeah. he had like the little black book, and so he was. Damn, just, you guys already had black books. Yeah. Well, it was more like like the. Well, you draw. It's like your sketch pad. The sketchbook. It was like yeah, the, you know, like the rectangular smaller one. Oh yeah. So for he sure. would just. But it was cool because like Chris would tag like, um, like his name or whatever. Like oh, I think it was his initials cam my brother oh that's dope so he put cam and he would Big do like hip-hop head man your brother's so dope bro. so he would do like the subways and i think he had one where like venom in it you know Damn, dude. so we were like because me and my brother were both into like 
you know, X-Men and yeah, you were mashing up all the stuff that you liked. Yeah. So I try and do stuff like that, like him. So I would mm. do, you know, like I was, I was into like any characters that had masks, you know? So like, okay. So that's what I would, I draw like a character and then try and put a tag on. Okay. That's pretty damn. I've never even thought about doing, well, it's kind of graffiti culture has a lot of that. Like there's a lot of comic book like uh style mm-hmm. in it. So yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to the skating though. Okay, so mm-hmm. you got that board. Mm-hmm. You didn't have trucks. You didn't have wheels. No. How did you go about your first complete? Did like you get handed over like a pair of old trucks by somebody or like? No, I think later on, I think like you're um, like I need trucks, Doug. I think my parents were like, okay, well you have the board, and I think I didn't really stress about it too much, and I think just having it is cool, huh? Like yeah. you were all re- you already felt like I wasn't really like I was kind of nervous about getting the whole setup because I was really? worried like. You know, because everyone was so good at the time. Because I, I would see the you know all those older skaters like the pose and all them, and so even like Matt Talley and them, they were older than me. So I'd be like, damn, like I'll never. You were. I was so scared. So I was like, uh, you know, like not getting trucks and wheels was kind of like a relief for me a little bit. And I think my mom, <laughs> I think my parents eventually got me trucks and wheels. Um, what? Like a half a year later or like a few months later. That's how it felt at least. Do you remember your first pair of trucks? Adventures. Oh man, Adventures are always the best. And I had some like... I was obsessed with those bushings, bro. And I had some really soft wheels. That was like the thing back then. Yeah, soft wheels were the shit. Like they even bounced. I remember you would, (laughs) right? Like you would drop your board and it's like... I remember I I was telling Joey this, Joey Ober. Shout out Joey. That one time I was at Skate City or, or Coronado or something. I can't remember. Yeah. But, like, we had our board stacked up, and I think my board fell down, and, like, it fucking bounced all high up. <laughs> I think they were like, balls? damn, bro, whose fucking moon board is this? <laughs> <laughs> and it just, just stayed quiet. Moon <laughs> board, bro. <laughs> it just stayed quiet. That's I like, hilarious. I don't want to say What kind mine. of wheels were they, though? Because there was only specific brands that had those soft-ass bouncy wheels. Well, I don't know if they were a brand, but I bought them at Skate City, uh, and so they were just Skate City blanks. That's do you remember those said. angel wheels? Angel wheels? Yeah, like a little praying angel. No, I don't. It was a damn dude. Like ghetto anyway, child or something. Anyways, I don't wait, what's say that again? Ghetto child? It might have been ghetto child, but it was like a like a blonde kid that looked like the little kid pissing. Oh. But it he had a World halo. Industries. He had a halo World around. Industries. That was a those were world that was a World Industries graphic. Yeah, it was like an angel boy. I think yeah, actually, yeah, no. It World Industries had wheels too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of those companies did they had soft wheels, but Isn't that crazy yeah. though that like you know, every board company had wheels and you like know, it's, it's so old that back then they used to have slicks. You know what slicks that? were? No. Nah, <laughs> it's kinda like a slick there's like a a coating of plastic on it. On what? On the bottom of the board, sorry. On the bottom they had you could order like regular boards and you could order a slick version. So back then you could order like a center to like board. slide. So like board yeah. slide and yeah. shit. Yeah. So I, I was Whoa. like, so like Matt slick. Yeah. So like, it was like the, like a covering on the deck. That's so weird. We I remember slide. when flip had that. Remember how they started doing those like weird wavy like decks. Yeah. There was definitely like, what the hell was that called? Oh, damn it. I don't remember the name of that. Yeah. But that shit died off quick. Yeah. I would say late nineties, early two thousands. They were de- experimenting with a lot yeah, of shit. They had inter, uh, expedition one had these interlock boards. What is where that? you put the board, the nuts on the bottom of the board, and you, and you have what? no on the top. Yeah, I had it. It sucked because you break your board so easy. Yeah, because the stress. Like, and then how are you gonna like? Okay, you can still remove them, obviously. Yeah, so basically, it's just inverted. Inverted, so you would screw the the nut. Well, why? Because like they were experimenting with like having your whole board being grip. Yeah. What the fuck, dude? Yeah. So like, there was a whole bunch of technology. I feel like there's still. I, I mean, the most experimental shit that I saw, and I was like, damn. And I remember getting these for Joe Barreras for his mm-hmm. birthday were tensors bro oh yeah and i remember buying them and i don't know i think it was it might have been one of the poe brothers but they were like are you sure you want to buy these and i was <laughs> like why well he's like i don't know man. there's way better trucks than these and i don't know if they're still around or not but dude joe loved them and i think it what's the purpose of that it was just for snow slides so they had a slide plate and so basically <laughs> slide like, plate yeah so that was the gimmick and i i had them too i had did them. you the, i got him a badass pair they were like chrome with the black yeah. Um, slide would but they had a they had like every color, yeah. dude. I had the I had black and silver. Those and were I, the sickest. I had dude. the plain ones with the black uh, slide plate, and then yeah. I yeah, and you could replace the slide plate. And I had the orange and black. Those were sick. I too. had those. Do you no, those are my favorite ones. Yeah, they were. You so you actually used tensors? Yeah, tensors. I was like, because I was sliding back then. Whenever I got yeah, those that's trucks, true. You so. were already doing shit. Okay, so let's go back to yeah. your progression of skateboarding. That was really dope. I mean, I don't think we've ever talked about personally like 
where it really, really started. And uh, you would always, you would always mention Shahan and mm-hmm. you know those groups of friends and stuff. But man, that's that's fucking nutty. Um. So then, okay. So then, how did your progression start? So you got your deck. You started skating with with all like your homies. Grade. Yeah. So seventh grade, it started popping off. Uh huh. And I honestly don't know what happened, but I just really like got into it because I just I don't know like. You hyper focused on skating, bro. Because I, I feel like your progression is just like yeah. quantum leaps, bro. So it took me forever to ollie, and it took me like several months to learn how to kickflip, right? But I feel like once I learned how to kickflip, I just really like. That unlocked a lot. I just felt like really confident in myself. And then I just started like picking yeah. it up real easy. Yeah, it is the kickflip. Once you do the kickflip, you're like, what the hell? Yeah, I think once I remember, I remember I did it at, at Coronado. They used to have the levels there. I remember skating. Damn, there. you got to skate the levels. Yeah, I was. Yeah, because I think they got rid of it. Like, like they were only around for. But a lot of pros got to skate levels, too. No. Yeah, I think so. I, all I remember is one one time like I heard Ronnie Craiger was skating there. <laughs> Like he's getting there, pretty but fucking nuts, dude. yeah, but yeah, I think that's what happened. I think just I was I'm skating in my backyard by myself a lot. How? What was the setup in the backyard? So like you had, had cement. We had cement, like um, or there was also like a basketball court. That okay, I don't know if my dad installed it or the people that lived there. Before. But you had surface area, so it was like a little like twelve foot okay flat concrete path. My brother would play basketball out there, and I would just skate. I would just okay. practice my backyard. There was a crack. So I put yeah. my wheel in there and that's I learned how to the way to do it, dog. So I learned once I learned. Well, I learned heel flips first and burial flips. Why is it? That, I feel like a lot of people learn heel flips first. I think because it's uh, it's a li- yeah, it's kind of hard. Like it is hard your, your, the to get your board. Yeah, to bring your foot towards you and to keep it straight. Yeah, heels stay out. It kind of like and then you just catch it for yeah. some reason. But the kick flip, it's it's going. Yeah, you're right. You're so, absolutely right. So I already had heel flips and burial flips, but once I learned how to do kick flips, you had burial flips down. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't rolling too. But you fast, could do it. I could do, <laughs> but once I learned how to kickflip, I felt like that was like, I just loved it. And then after that, I just started like you got hooked. I got hooked, and I would skate every single day. And I don't know, I don't know what it is. I just started progressing. And so just, then, okay, so then how how much more time had to go by until you started getting a camera? Because you were already, and you've told me stories where you and Noah would you know film yourself with cameras and stuff. But when did you? realize like i need to start filming like my group of friends or even just myself skateboarding well i would say that i got into cameras before i even started skating yeah this was way before skating so kind of around like the fourth grade time too um i was watching i'd be at home a lot and i think it's a time when like my brother was in middle school so he kind of stopped like hanging out with me that happens and so i was just by myself entertaining myself and I watched movies a lot and I saw there was a movie called the Hut sucker proxy on TV and it's like Tim Robbins. Anyways, it was just on TV. Like it came out on, on, on HBO, I guess. Okay. What was the, what, what are we talking? What's the genre here? Psychological thriller. No, it's like an, a, like a action adventure. No, it, it's kind of like a, like a fantasy movie. I'm trying to like, I don't know the genre. That's okay. It, it's it, so it's stories about this guy that about this company that they decide they decide to get to uh the company's failing or something and they, they try and find a guy <laughs> to put the blame on so they could like Can't take all the money from him for the company this is what started it all no no but like i i didn't really so know you're, but you're watching I this i didn't know what was going on yeah, yeah right but, but you're watching it but anyways there's a scene uh-huh. where this guy jumps off the building okay. right and he's falling and it looked fucking crazy and yeah. then like he stops and there's like the this old white guy that looks like an angel and he's playing like this harp and he's talking to him and i was like what the fuck you know <laughs> i didn't you know as a kid i was like what is this anyways in my room i'd watch like gi joe x-men whatever but, yes. but i'd watch discovery channel yeah. So there was a show called uh, Movie Magic that discovered. Oh yeah, I remember Movie Magic. Yeah. So then they did an episode on H- the Hut Sucker Proxy. Whoa, weird. Yeah. And so, anyways, they showed the whole thing, like how he did that. It. Even that scene. That scene. So that was a scene. That was a scene. And they showed how they did it. Okay, it's like uh, in the Matrix when he started bending backwards yes. and they dissect that. And like, yes. Okay. So then, that. And then also, I think I don't know if it's the same episode. Another one later, they did one on Demolition Man and all oh, the oh man, I and love all that. the guns. That dude, that movie is yes. ahead of its time. And so, I, once I saw they did Demolition Man, I was like, holy shit! 
So anyways, my mom, my parents had a camcorder in the closet. Okay. And I just grabbed it and I would just start recording little dumb things in my room by myself. So that inspired you. You were like, so cameras is what's capturing these things. You need the camera. Well, because I didn't know how they're making stuff before, you know. Yeah, exactly. I I think I've been to, you know, Universal Studios. Isn't that funny? Like, you don't. Yeah, I didn't think anything. It's all a camera right here. Yeah. So then I would do little things with my cousin here and there. But then I think like, you know, I always had the camera around just in my room farting around. But then like once (laughs) I started skating. Like Shahan had a camera that he had like a VHS when you record on Damn, the, the one, the shoulder it was one huge. It was huge. And they had a big ass case. And was he filming skating? Yeah. So I think our first video we, we, we did was called first try. And that was like an eighth grade. Dope. And so you think we, that's out there somewhere in the freaking, Oh, well, I'm sure Chris or I don't know if his family has a VHS, but dude, that would be dope. And, and so I, I think, um, so he would record that. And so then I would try and mess around. Yeah. But I didn't. And so my parents camcorder, they didn't have the battery. So I would just have to have it connected. So I wouldn't really film myself like anywhere besides my house. So you had to have it connected to a power source in order to film. Yeah. So like when we went skating in the streets was well, basically like you had an extension cord. You had like, no, no I didn't, I didn't use it. <laughs> okay. So we'd use Chris's camera. All right, gotcha. Cause Chris was filming, but yeah, you know, skating like Polk elementary and stuff like that. Damn. So, but you know, th- I think that's where it started. And then I think like, I just really liked the filming part of it. Yeah. And I was like, I think freshman, so then I was eighth grade and then freshman year, I think for Christmas, I wanted a camera for my birthday. You're like, I know exactly what I want. Yeah, so and I what a, was that camera? That was a Sony Handycam, like a DCR. Tape, two, 240. This is tape it's still. A, a digital eight millimeter. Oh, wow. So it was like, the, it was, we got it at Circuit City. Damn. Dude, you're taking me back. So I was like, Circuit I, think it was like th- I think it was like 300 bucks. That's pretty. That's yeah. No, that was like a big thing. Yeah, for that's like, a huge yeah, thing. Yeah, that was a huge thing. My parents, because they were like, I don't know if you, well, you want a camera, 300 yeah. bucks, but I, I'm, I'm, you know. Yo, that's all I want. Just that. I was like, yeah, you don't have to give me anything else. Like, just that. Fuck a birthday. Yeah, I was like, just give me the camera. And then, like, I looked at it forever and they got yeah. it for me. So sick. So I think that's where that, the camera and filming. And then after that, it was like, I just. It hasn't stopped. I had a, you know, I'd wait and I would get a, I had a wide angle I got eventually, like 60 bucks. So then how did you start cultivating the, like the filming aspect of your style? Because how, where were you getting inspired to get these lenses or like your own setup and stuff like that? Was it from the movie part of things that you were a fan of or was it from the skating thing? Because I feel like fish eyes, that's always been like the bread and butter, right? But I mean, there's all sorts of stuff that you could do. So I think for me. Well, the first like year I had the camera, I didn't have anything. It was just raw. raw. It was just the cam, the long lens. Yeah. And then eventually I met other skaters because it wasn't just me that was filming skating. It was a lot of other skaters too at that point. And they were like, oh, you need a, you need a fisheye. Mm. I'm like, what fisheye? You know? And so then like the closest thing I could get was like, I think Circuit City had a wide angle. Yeah. So that's what I got was with a wide angle. Okay. And then I think the movie thing was just kind of like in my head, but I never really like skateboarding was such a part of my life that like, I would just, it completely took over, it completely took over. So like that, that's kind of where okay. my like interest in it. Okay. Was. So let's talk about your first skate video, which you had mentioned is monopoly. Yes. So that's filmed by you. Is yeah, that edited by you? That was filmed by me. And then like my friends too, because you know, I'd hand them the camera and then a few of them, if they had tapes, but mainly, yeah, it was, it was filmed, edited, and all that stuff by me. And uh, who was in that video? Who were like... So that was... Um, who were the stars? So that was the... I would say the I made that like the middle part of my sophomore year in high school. Death is full length? This is... It was a, yeah, it was like a full length, well, like 25 minutes. And this is, a, this is tape? This isn't digital, right? No, it was ta- it was VHS. So how were you well, editing? Actually, so no, so my mom, yeah, bring us into what's what's the process of this film? Okay, so all I was doing was filming skating like freshman year. Okay, and then I got the 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 wide angle. What's the time span of this? I would say like a year. Like Monopoly a year. was only a year. Yeah, it was only like a year. Damn, you guys were all ripping, dude. Yeah, I was like, a, well, I'd say a year and a half, year and a half. Okay, of filming. So it was like some of my old footage. Was it intentional? Like, were you like, all right, I'm going to make, were you just no, like stacking I clips? I think it was just stacking clips. And then I was thinking like, so, okay. So I had, um, so what it was is I was like, how am I going to edit this thing? <laughs> you, you just know, have started, a bunch of tapes and shit. Well, I, was, like, I was filming stuff and then, um, uh, uh, well, 
I think I asked some other skaters and they told me, oh, you need like a fire wire and you need to connect this to your computer. So now you're like, mom and dad, I need a fucking computer. No, well, they didn't give me a computer. My mom had a lap, a laptop that she just had that she would use. And so I just started editing on her laptop. Gnarly. So I would use Movie Maker and I would just capture the footage and then I was just kind of organizing it. Logging um, all your stuff. Logging all the tapes way back. Like, I don't know, I was like, I'd say I started like freshman year. It's pretty impressive, man, that you were already getting into the production of stuff like that. That's probably why everything's so like natural for you now. I mean, I, I did well. I was you doing, weren't thinking. I wasn't thinking, and also I wasn't doing any of my schoolwork. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you were doing. That's all I was doing. That's pretty nice. Skating dude. and then just filming. Like I mean, I do my homework, but I was already failing. And yeah, you were like bare minimum. Bare minimum. Got to get these stacks. So I was just filming like that, and then eventually I had enough footage that I was like, I think I can make a video. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, I just put it together. It was it was um, it was kind of weird because it was like my f- freshman year. I was hanging out with a group of friends. It was like. Chris Shahan, Nate Ramos, friend Scott Bartels, uh, my friend Pee Wee. And then it was like the second group of friends that it, because Nate and them kind of stopped skating a little bit. And so when I was like a sophomore, oh, and Chris Loeffler. So Loeffler was, sophomore, was in it? Loeffler was in Loeffler's it. Loeffler's in Monopoly? Yeah, he has a part. Oh, and then shit. my friend Ralphie. Uh, my friend Gonzalo. We got to bring that one back Joe, and master it. Yeah, Joey Ober's in it. Joey's in it too. Manny, Danny, they're all in. It. There's, there was a. It's because I would take my camera and then everywhere you would go. But were you? Did you already know these people, so or I'm, were you like? Okay, so what it was is because like, now that you have a camera, you're the guy. It's like, hey man, come. Well, it was kind of more like, or we film, and then like if I saw someone that I knew, and at that point oh. I was getting better at skating. Yeah. So that year I had got on Bladen skate on the team. So you got sponsored that year. I got sponsored the summer of eighth grade. By Blaine Skate. God damn, dude. So then, like, I was hanging. Too many layers to this, but it's insane how (laughs) fast. I just feel like it's so fast how things started happening. It kind of, it was. It was, huh? Yeah, because I think about it, it was only, like, three or four years. Damn. But I was skating at Blaine Skate. Well, they had the shop first, and then they were on the, this this tiny store, and then they moved. Anyways, but I started meeting more skaters because of that. So I would do the de- and so they would do like demos and stuff and they had you were already in the demos yeah so I was in the demos and they had a team so I meet like people like uh, Josh Melendez and then uh, Josue Josue was on Blade and Skate damn uh, Josue was on Blade and Skate yeah so that's how, how, how I, was, I was meeting them yeah so then I would go and skate that fucker was so good so I would skate um, you know Coronado that was the spot and if I if I knew the skater I, I was you like, were so you were skating with the All Stars. I guess, yeah. I mean, like, we were skating with our friends, but at the same time, like, all those guys, yeah. There was another, like, serious level to it. You know what I mean? Like, if you're yeah. riding for a shop. Yeah, so I, I definitely, def- once I was on Blade and Skate, I really cared about it. You know what I mean? Like, wow. So it was just, like, I had all that footage, and then that second year, sophomore year, like, I started hanging out with, I met Paul Ewan and Jimmy, and I met uh, Chris Pleasant and those guys. Yeah. Oh, and then even, uh, uh, like, Johnny Fletcher. And That's the, right. And... So, but did Blade and Skate have a? Because the skate shop, I don't think unless they have a filmer, mm-hmm. they're not stacking clips. No, there was no like official filmer thing. Like we all had our cameras, so like Loeffler had a camera too. And did Blade like, and Skate ever have a like a shop a video? Shop video? I think they. Well, I think um, Loeffler made one. Yellow Jackets. I think that was the closest one. Mm, I do remember Yellow Jackets. Yellow Jackets. He even made stickers. Yeah, and he stuff. did. He yeah. went so, crazy. So with it wasn't it. just me that was making skate videos too. It was like no, for sure. It was already part of it. I think that's how it just that's just the way it is. Yeah. So there was like the culture of skateboarding. Yeah. So I think that's kind of where like I kind of leaned into it, and then mm. I didn't realize. So fuck school. Yeah. So full so, fledged skating. So eventually, at the, <laughs> so um, like the end of, like. I was like 15 I had like a full length video which was Monopoly and then what I did was the only thing is I didn't I think I put it on one VHS and then oh and then that same time so in sophomore year I got on Skate City I left Blade and Skate damn dude because I would really want to get in Skate City that was my goal to get on Skate City so then like sophomore year I got on Skate City so that's how I started meeting other skaters so then how was that when you left Blade and Skate? Did you did you did, was it just a natural thing? You're like, how can I put was this? Was it like a conversation? With yeah, that? yeah. Was that a conversation or was it just like jumping ship? Because I, I, I mean, no. Well, like uh, Matt, Matt and uh, Miss Jolly. Well, Matt mainly. Because there, were there like, was beef there for a little bit. Yeah. Well, that was a little bit afterwards. Not with me, I guess. I don't think, but. At that time, it was just more like, I think they would do like every year, they would be like, hey, you still want to be on the team? Okay. 
And I think like after my freshman year in high school, I was like, I told Matt like, no, nah, man, like uh, I really want to try out for Skate City. You, you know? just flat out told him. I told him and he was like, oh, that's cool, man. Like, no that's worries. cool. I was like, dude, like I'm still, I live here on the West side. Like I'm not gonna. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm like, I hope that's okay. And Can like, I ask oh. you why, w- w- what made you want to change up uh, skate shops? Well, it's just like when I started skating, you know, ever since fourth, fifth grade, like I knew about Skate City just because like Chris Cheyenne and all the older skaters, that's like the only shop they talk about. And it had so like, what was before Skate City? I mean, it was just Skate City. W- that was like that was no, it was the that's like the, the original shop. You know, damn. it was like I think when it first started out, it was called Locals Only, <laughs> and, it, and it went through like different owners. Okay, and then they would do like demos. So like even before like I got on Blade and Skate and stuff, like Skate City would throw demos, and that they would have like Toy Machine come down and hookups too. Or Is that like, when they had that Osiris? Who brought Osiris? And no, that was Blade and Skate. LNX was it LNX. Yeah. So no, well, that actually, was Blade and Skate. But it, well, so that was a hard decision because at the time when skate when blade and skate was like my freshman year they were really killing it with that mesa shop and and they were doing, who was uh blade and skate sorry. okay okay so okay, blade okay. and skate when they had their mesa shop they're really killing it like they by grew, coronado yeah they grew really fast because i think there was no skate shop on the west side yeah there wasn't and then it just grew really fast and then they they had the arcade demo they had the Osa- and when Osa- they had arcade come through they had that uh was it death wish tour not death wish aftermath no no aftermath it was, was, it was cyrus it was a tour that it was the aftermath no, aftermath was uh, Osiris. And no, it was LNX. Osiris one. Yeah, when they came with the big bus. And yeah, then dude. All that was my. That was a, yeah. He, okay. Yes, but, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so and then there was a lot of skaters on. How on crazy, that. bro! It's like yeah. WWF. It was huge, bro. There's so many people. Huge. Yeah, there's so many people. So, as much as I liked lane skate, I was like, dude, I really want to be on yeah. Skate City just because, like, it was my own personal thing. Like, yeah, yeah. That's where I started getting into skating. So, anyways, they were cool about it, and then I had to make a sponsor me tape for. For Skate City, and then me and me and Loeffler did. So you and Loeffler bounced, went to Skate City. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was kind of like how the skateboarding filming thing kind of became a thing. And Monopoly, how did you rep? How how did that even go about? So you, did you edit that all on your on your mom's laptop? Yeah. So I edited. So you it all. finished it. You I finished it. I made I made some CDs, so people when their computer could play it, because I didn't Man, know bro, you were ahead of the curve on that one. So I didn't, yeah. So I was. Actually, a lot of people didn't see it because I only had it on CDs. So nobody had CD. Like, how? What do you mean CD? So, so you would pop it into your computer and, and watch it. the file. Yeah, it was like oh, because a, a movie maker. It was, yeah, it was a movie maker. It make like a MP, MPEG. <laughs> yeah, whatever. yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, so it make MPEG. like MPEG yeah. or a, a WMV Windows <laughs> movie file, whatever. How crazy, dude! And then, yeah, so that was how I made Monopoly. So what? Do you have a cop a copy of Monopoly right now? I ha- I don't have like a VHS, but I do have like the digital copy. Yeah, Dude, so I, I have it on. I have it on my YouTube. Okay, so it's on YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube. Right. MM Doom. It's on there. Oh, let's so. plug those shirts, man. Yeah. We're, we're, it's been a long ride, Mark. Yeah. Wow. And look, dude, we're already forty minutes. Dude, that's crazy to think that three years is like equivalent to an hour conversation. But I mean, it led into so many other things, man. Like I feel like you going back and and talking about that Robin Williams movie. I don't no, think t- that Tim Robbins. <laughs> Tim Robbins? Yeah, so uh, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure I've seen something. You know the guy from Shawshank Redemption? That's that's Tim Robbins, the tall guy. Oh, yeah. That's that's Tim Robbins. That's the guy that jumps off the... Yeah. I got to... We'll, well, pl- we'll plug in images. It's actually a Coen Brothers movie. I didn't know that. That's oh, wow. Right. But it's not like I was like in fourth grade, like, wow, this is a profound <laughs> film. It's not like that. I just saw... This if you see the scene, film. if I see, if you see the scene where a guy jumping off a building it catches and, and you, and then like this guy, little like an old man with, with like, a harp, like an angel with a harp, <laughs> floating in the snow, so you're it like, saves him or what? He likes they stop time. Oh wow! They stop time with like this big clock in the building. Oh, that's Cause, tight. Because the, the whole movie is like about like the place that it, it's a toy factory, not a toy factory, but they he like invents a hula hoop. Okay, and like, and yeah, he, like saves, with- he saves the company. Because he meant a hula hoop, those things. So, so they're trying to like end the like ruin the company and blame it on this guy because the Tim Robbins is the guy that works like in the factory. So you're saying he's he's committing suicide? So yeah, he. So then what happens is like at, at the end of the movie. So the first guy that ruined the company commits suicide, and that's the old man with the harp. With the harp. Yeah. Oh, I gotta watch. It's this a good movie, movie dude. It's a good movie. It's like a weird, like if you if you see the movie, you know what I'm talking about. It's kind of a weird like. Well, what could you compare it visually to? Visually? Like around that same time. 
Damn, I don't even know. There's nothing then. Nothing, I think. Shit, I, I think know. that's why it probably like stayed with you so hard yeah. when it came to the movie magic if stuff. You, if you seen, yeah, I know, and I just really, I was like, what the hell is this movie? It really <laughs> ingrained in my head. Yeah. I had no idea what the hell I was watching. Yeah, like it affected me. <laughs> what do you mean? Like I just, I kept rethinking that scene over and over again, and like I still, whenever time I watch it, I get like, I, I mean, want, you're hyping me up. Yeah. I want to watch it. it. It's not just the scene. It's just like at the time when I was a kid, like. So my dad will watch all these movies, like, like action movies, anything with Robert De Niro, you Ooh, know? Yeah, so dude. then I, I guess it's kind of like, um, that, that movie is kind of like magical. It's kind of like whimsical. You know what I mean? Like the only the thing music. that I can think, okay. Remember Indian in the cupboard? Yeah. It's like that. Like Where that. it's like, but, the, but it was like more adult like that. I like it. It's that. like, you know, yeah. Like Indian in the cupboard like it has a vibe to yeah, it. Yeah. Like that magical. I don't know what yeah, it, like how, cause there was no after effects. It was practical effects. Mm hmm but it was clean. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's you know exactly what I mean? Like that. Yeah. Okay. 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 So then, so skating happens. Um, well, let's continue. Cause the good thing is that we have, we have the audio and that's all I really care about. But so we're talking about how that movie really inspired you. Do you think it would, it leaked into now you pursuing your film, your film career? Yeah. I, I definitely think that at that time, I think it was just something that I, besides skateboarding, because skateboarding was something that I was really into, but it was like with my friends. Yeah, you're, like, you're so filmmaking is very much like an alone time thing. Yeah, and it was just something that like I really just like by myself, I just found myself doing, like I just gravitated towards, you know. like Were you writing or were you just like thinking visually? Um, well, I think like maybe like in middle school, I would just, the closest I would get to writing was just like I would draw, I would like storyboard. Or so like, you were already doing like treatments for yourself? Kind of. I mean, they were real basic, but it was just like, I'm going to, like, I would do like claymation stuff. So I would do like. What do you mean claymation? Like I had, I get Play-Doh. You I swear? Would, <laughs> yeah, I swear. <laughs> You're doing this shit? Yeah. Or I had my toys and I would do like stop motion. Yeah, I did do that too. Yeah, I yeah. I think, yeah, I think so a lot of us did that. I, that's, I, I think it was just kind of something that I would kind of in my head, I would already had in my head, but like, I didn't really think anything of it, but it was just something like by myself, like that I would watch like whatever movie was on TV. Mm. You know what I mean? Like anything like I would, you started I would, consuming film. Yeah. And then like, you know what, Chris Shahan, um, I, when I was in middle school, like I guess he was a movie buff and I don't think he knew that at the time, but like, I don't even think that was a, I'm sure there was a term. No. Yeah. I don't think it was. So like we would go to Choco lot. So, you know, blockbuster. Yeah, that, there you there you go. Yeah, so Blockbuster, I think that was the era we grew up in. So like we'd go, or even like, <laughs> so, are, yeah. So like the thing was we'd get like a horror movie, like you know, because you go to the horror section. Oh yeah, dude, all the of titles. Of course, I remember. Right. Dude. Yeah. And then, and then like whatever like the parents would get, or or you would try and get like a teen movie. Or, you know. What yeah, I mean? yeah. They had everything separated by by like, like genre. Yeah, genre, but also like they had the. Like the new release wall, mm -hmm. and then they had. They even had like I remember seeing UFC, mm -hmm. like old school UFC yeah, yeah. stuff. My daddy like Sorrentos, Hollywood video, yeah, Hollywood video, and even like like furs. Oh, dude, I yeah. used to love furs. Yeah, that dude, that was that's like a big thing with me. I think I was more into the visual things because, I mean, you had to have a setup, right? Like, think about it. Like, you had a whole home setup to mm -hmm. watch movies. You yeah. even do you remember those fucking things you would put your your tape in to rewind them yeah, so yeah. that you could take it back. Yeah. Cause then it was like a race car. <laughs> <laughs> That's so <laughs> tight, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Like a NASCAR? No, it's just like a, like it was just like a, like a roadster or something. That's pretty badass. So, th so then what, what do you remember being like your first, your first film idea where you were like, okay, I think I could, I could get into filmmaking. My first, what, the first film that made me think about really making films? well no more like when do you remember or like at what age do you remember like i want to make movies because film skate skate films are totally different because that yeah. structure is like it obviously has helped you throughout mm -hmm. the years especially since you're filming editing you know producing ev everything that you're doing i think i was probably like 16 17 i was i was making skate videos but then i was like Okay, so like at the time, like all of our friends were like, "Are we gonna get sponsored?" Like that was the whole. So there time. was like something out of that that you that like, was gonna happen off of a skate video. That's what we were thinking, but then like for me, I was just kind of like, 
I don't, I started liking more of like the filming part of it. Mm. And I started kind of stepping away from like the tricks as hard as I used to. And then I was just kind of thinking like, yeah, we didn't even touch on how hard you went on all those parts, bro. It's just fucking insane. So, so I think I just kind of like started to think about like a career, not career, but I'm like, I'd like to see if I could make movies. Like actually produce. I know 16, 17. Yeah. I think I started, I started thinking about it, but I just didn't really know how to do it. It wasn't like I was like, I have a plan to move out and do all this. No, it's yeah. just, I would say that was like, you know, I think that time I, you know, like when people started to drive and then I would, that's when the Cinemark opened uh, over on the West side. And so mm. I started going there. <laughs> this is fucking crazy. We didn't have a movie theater, dude. We had the mall. Yeah, we did. And then when that happened, General I just, cinema, dude, that's when like, like kill bill, the first one came out uh, and like, that's probably why we like Texas that stuff. Chainsaw Massacre, the remake, you know, like all those <laughs> where it closes the freaking house, house of wax. Damn, with Paris Hilton. Like uh, Jeepers Creepers, like all that. That was that era. That was that era. And I, I started thinking like, damn, it'd be so cool to make something like that. And I think that's kind of where it started for me. What was the first was, I always botched this. I know it's not, it's Theotokos. How do you pronounce it? Theotokos. Is that really how you say it? Yeah. Theotokos? Theotokos. Theotokos. Yeah. Is that the first film project that you actually like pieced together? I would say that was my first one that was like like you're, scripted, like with people in it. Because I mean, if we go back, written. man, we have what's his name? He's in all the law commercials. Hector. Hector, Hector dude. Des. Hector yes. Des, dude. Like that's like really like the El Paso film culture that because they've mm-hmm. been trying to do that. Well, they've been doing it, not trying. They've been doing it for mm-hmm. for a while. Yeah. But that's where you kind of started meeting all of all of the film industry here locally. Yeah. Right. Yes. Damn, dude, we're already hitting an hour. I don't even know how to go about this. You're going to have to help me piece this together, though, dude, because yeah, like, I know, you. you know, yeah. but let's just plug up what you have now. We're going to do an episode, too, because we went on a whole hour on just talking about the origin story of all this. And I didn't even think like it was going to lead into an hour, but it has. Mm-hmm. Um, where could anybody watching this or listening to this see your work? Well, um, if you want to see like my old skateboarding stuff on my YouTube, MM Doom. MM Doom on YouTube? On YouTube, yeah. That's where I have like. How far do you have a bad catalog? To Monopoly? Is Monopoly on there? Yeah, Monopoly's on That's there. Right. Organized Crime. <laughs> I have the Skate City number two. I have Moose on there. We got to make shirts for all of these, dude. Yeah, so I have. I have Moose all those. number two. That's where I started fucking with you. Yeah, and then my movie stuff, I have it on the website Desert People Pictures, but also. On ChicanoHollywood.com Chicano slash TV or ChicanoHollywood.tv. You can watch Dirt City and my short film, Human Dropout and Cut. And then on Tubi, Dirt City's on Tubi too. So. Tubi 2? There's a Tubi 2? No, no, as well. It's like yeah. MTV5. <laughs> <laughs> or what is it? It's like, right? There was like three MTVs? Yeah. Some shit like that. MTV East. Telemundo. Yeah. I don't know. Mundos? Mundos was good, dude. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. Anyways. All right. Well, we said we were going to keep this to an hour. We have a, a structure we're trying to follow, but also uh, touch on the shirt that, so you just put out this shirt and it obviously people will be able to see it on the YouTube and uh, I'll put a link to this too. But, um, what inspired, to, uh, for you to make this shirt? Okay. So on my YouTube channel, I do these things called doom logs, which basically I got inspired by, uh, uh, Beagle from the Baker videos. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like, he does tapes where he basically posts the whole like session of like these clips that he got with like the Baker team. Even if there's no makes, right? It's yeah. just like he. It's like the day in the life type. Yeah, of it's, style. it's not like edited. I mean, it's a little edited just to cut down the whole yeah. tape, but it's like mainly just the day in the life, like you said. Yeah. So I started doing them during COVID, and then um, started doing it again. But then um, I started thinking about the cameras involved that I was using and I wanted to make a camera shirt because mm. like I started noticing cameras, the camcorder is becoming popular again. Yeah. It's definitely made a comeback. Yeah. So I started, you know, playing with my old camcorder and then I decided to make a doom lock shirt to make it look like a, a Sony cam. Tell yeah. me how you, you were even telling me that you had to scan the manual and stuff. Yeah. So, um, I was looking at the images and I wanted to do something similar to like the Sony manual. Yeah. But I couldn't find any images. You got to create like it, any, man. Any artwork. 
So I had to scan the old manual. So dirty. I think that's why they came out so dope. And bro. then I just half toned it and then I just changed the And are these gonna be available by the time that this comes out? These will be available by the time it comes out. Yeah. Perfect. All right, dude. Well I think we could wrap it up. I just wanna thank you for making time. I know this was kinda like rushed, mm -hmm. but we gotta keep doing it, man. And I think we should definitely do an episode two just to continue the conversation of your filmmaking because I mean, we just got into you busting your face, carpet skating, <laughs> yeah. you know, stuff that I haven't even really talked to you about. Yeah. Well, that, you know, you can see this as like a lot of my skate history and then Mark, the Mark Chronicles. <laughs> and then I'm going to do like me and my filmmaking. Yes. The next yeah, one can yeah, be just yeah. mainly the filmmaking. All right, dude. Well, let's wrap it up. I want to just thank you for making the time and I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Oh, Bodie. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace.